Steve Martin's Working Wildlife is one of the top companies in the movie industry. Been around for over 30 years. As people know, it starts at the top and it trickles down. And we have great things at the top, so it trickles down to the rest of us. Each animal has their own personality, their own quirks, just like humans do. Uh, their flaws, their goods, their, they're amazing and it brings everything to the table. Well, how did I start becoming an animal trainer? It wasn't anything that I ever thought of or ever thought that I would be. However, when I was around 16, I used to hang out because I was a very much a back outdoor person and there was the uh, animal compound there in Soledad Canyon that I really loved and I used to camp out there. In fact, Steve knew and saw me out there and he thought I was some crazy kid camping out there. So even from younger than that, I'd always grab cats and handle animals. So I always kind of had a certain way with animals, but I never really thought of it as a career or anything like that. And from there, I always, again, I refer back to I always had black house cats. I always loved black cats, and after we were together for a while, Jungle Book was rearing its head for a film debut. We were together for about five years after we, Steve had acquired this property that we're on now. And by about 1991 is when we were talking to producers about doing Jungle Book, and of course, Bagheera, being a black leopard, would be the star. It was a perfect opportunity for me to say, well, I've always had black house cats. I just want a bigger black house cat. I really honestly never thought of myself as a trainer. So I found somebody who had actually breeding was, they were African leopards. And I happened to go into this place in Florida and they were just born. They were only three days old when I saw them. There was Crystal and Ivory and they also had another little female cub that was there too. But it, there was two females and a male and I said, I want both because I really like them to have companionship. It's very important for the psyche of animals to have companionship. They've been pretty amazing actually, but I think it's all really given to the fact that they came from a strong base. The biggest thing in any animal trainer especially is exposure. And what I mean by exposure is you got to take them everywhere. Before they did the Jungle Book, they actually at a casino in Laughlin is where they kind of grew up, which was a fabulous training ground. Because in training isn't about teaching them tricks or making them do things. Because that's not gonna help if they're just being trained to do one thing or several things in the same area. Film work means we get a call, okay, come here, and uh, we just need them standing on a mark while some actor steps behind them. Of course, they forget to tell you that the actor's on fire, there's lightning bolts, and there's a noise machine, and there's a camera coming, zooming right up to their face. So what can prepare them for that? That is, again, taking these cats everywhere that you can, traveling them. Every opportunity we have when there's a project that we're doing, we have young animals that we've acquired, and we always like to get our animals as babies. Therefore, the bond creates from the very beginning. The bond for them was being with me, being secure, being not, mom says this is safe, then it's fabulous. Then we're going to go and we're going to do this. This is fun. But this goes along with I clean his teeth, which you'll see in some of my DVDs that I do. I scrape off the tartar, get up underneath the gum. He has anal glands problems. I mean, the list goes on. But you know what? It all comes from the fact that this cat is so emotionally bonded and attached to me. He knows whatever I'm doing, it's helping him. That's one thing great about my cats, too, and other people that do this that know what I'm talking about that they never have picked out people. They have never been strange with anybody because they're so around people in different situations and different people. But it's always the big security, always is that mom's there and if I say it's okay, then it's okay. And as strange as that is, and they've done so many amazing things, I mean, things that I'm even shocked that they would do, that it wouldn't bother them. We've had bombs and all kinds of stuff going off, helicopters, you name it with film work, never even paid attention. I wear clothing around them, hats, dresses. Traditionally, most big cats, if they're not around that kind of clothing, will grab it. All of this which plays into the part that models that come and work with these animals and they're wearing gowns and silk things. And that's another reason that my leopards are one of the better cats to work with people because there's always all types of costumes or hats or helmets or whatever you want to say. 
So this all again comes from all that exposure and dedication. But you know what? There's one thing that really matters and it reigns true in all unique bonds, because I'm sure there, I have met a few other people that have had leopards, especially leopards with women that have had very close relationships. I don't know, quite as intimate as I have gotten with these. But basically there is one thing that no one can deny is the power of love. And it's just, when you have that, it's amazing again to where you can go with it. Other companies have people come and go. And the bond with me, the trust, the exposure, everything that I've talked about before, I can have them work safely around models. Take a big name like Angelina Jolie. Here we are about seven years ago, there was a still shoot for Rolling Stone magazine and they needed close proximity with the cat. So we went out there in these sand dunes and she literally stood over Crystal. And the cat was just very comfortable with her right away. And over all the years, I've never had my cats uncomfortable, but when production companies need somebody or an actor, performer, within close proximity of the leopard, I'm the number one choice. Just because there really isn't anybody else that I feel in my, my personal feeling and professional feeling that has devoted the time that I have. And I think everybody else, all of our competitors will agree. Because there's even people that have leopards that will call me if it has special needs like that. And also, I mean, after 18 years, they're 18 years old and they're still performing all the time and doing very well. These cats have seen and done so much. Even Ivory, after all these years and all the different films and, and commercials and everything they've done, when he first comes out and he's first on stage, they're always kind of looking around, taking it all in. And the focus is always right away as they go to a mark. And as soon as they go, oh, okay, I know this. So I don't care if there's elephants running by me, oh, I'll go to my mark and I get reward. So he'll go right to his mark. Do they get in trouble if they don't do something right? Yeah, you'll tell them, hey, hey, no, I said on your mark. But you never have to do any kind of a physical type thing. They just, they're smart enough. And especially getting that in their head that a mark is a place that they go to no matter where they're at. It really is like a safe zone, just like it is going back into a holding cage. We don't really like to have our animals on chains per se, just because they get more anxious. This again reduces any anxiety that there might be. It just is comfortable for both, both the trainer and the animal. Now there is always argument about captivity, that they should be in the wild. But what they're not looking at is without captivity, humans would not even have a desire or a yearning to, to take care of these animals or to save them. I mean, people became enamored with animals because of film. Even though many animal activists think that having animals in film is wrong, but it's animals in any form of media, including a zoo. You take your kid to the zoo, you begin so young at a young age, and that child is, goes, Mommy, look at the leopard, look at the tiger, look at the elephant. Just think as he's growing up, that's what he thinks about. Maybe someday that particular child is gonna grow up to try and save the elephants, to try and save leopards and whales and other animals, because why? It inspired, they were inspired by seeing them. But if they had never seen them, they would have no interest, they wouldn't even know what exotics are. We actually have ran into models where we've taken a wolf on a set, she didn't even know what a wolf was. Some people have even seen some of our cats, they've called my leopards tigers or lions. Captivity, again, has brought enlightenment to people as to what and how we're going to save these, these animals that we ourselves are the ones that are taking away their natural habitats. They only have the natural instinctual urges and desires and I try and replicate that as best that I can and giving them an abundance of attention and time and letting them walk and chew on bushes and all the natural things that they would have and anybody else who's in this industry that cares about their animals, and most do. Sure, there are the select few that do not, but there are most people that have animals and work them, whether it be in film work, zoos, or any other private type sectors that they're qualified to do so, care about their animals. Just like most humans that have children care and love their children. For more information on Steve Martin's Working Wildlife, call 661-245 2406 or visit us online at www.workingwildlife.com.